The focus of this video is evaluating replacement guilds for feet and leg soundness. Selecting replacement guilds with proper feet and leg soundness is important for pig farm profitability. At the sow farm, good structural conformation will allow females to better compete in group housing situations and will enhance sow herd retention. While during the grow-finish phase, offspring from replacement guilds with good feet and legs will result in a greater percentage of full value market hogs sold. The guilt pictured here is an example of a female with ideal structural conformation. At the bottom of the picture, you can see she has even toes that are pointed forward. Moving from the ground upward, this guilt has very good slope or cushion to her front and rear pasterns, flexible hocks, and excellent curvature in her front knee. At the top of the picture, you can see she is also level topped. Base width is another important aspect of ideal structural conformation. The guilt shown here is out on the corners, meaning she stands with space between both her front and rear legs, and her toes are pointed forward. Listed here are the component traits of structural conformation we will cover in this video. Highlighted are perhaps the most important feet and leg traits, front leg side view, and locomotion. Scientific research consistently shows that gilts with proper angle to the front pastern and knee have superior longevity in the sow herd. As we work through this list of structural conformation traits, you should see how they are favorably related. In other words, gilts with good front leg side view are more likely to have a satisfactory rear leg side view, front view, rear view, base width, and locomotion. Research from the Midwest suggests the front legs of a pig hold 56% of its body weight. Perhaps this suggests front leg structure is more important than rear leg structure. This diagram, adapted from the National Swine Improvement Federation, shows how the angle of the pastern and knee change for weak pasterns, normal, and buck kneed conditions. Gilts that are severely buck kneed should always be culled. These gilts are more likely to become downer animals, which is both an animal welfare issue and results in loss of profitability. Shown here are examples of gilts with different front leg side views. Let's take a closer look at how the slope of their pasterns and knees differ. The two gilts shown on the left have very good slope to their front pastern and knee. The third gilt, though, is somewhat buck kneed, yet still has some cushion in her pasterns. If you have a shortage of gilts, this female may be kept, but if a high percentage of your keeper gilts look like this, you should reevaluate your gilt source. The gilt on the far right is severely buck kneed and very straight in her pasterns. This type of gilt should not be allowed in the breeding herd. Again, here is our gilt with excellent slope to her front pastern and knee. Note the surface area of the foot that is in contact with the floor. If we amplify the angle of this gilt's front pastern and knee, we can see the slope closely resembles the shape of a banana. Comparing the ideal slope to the curvature of a banana is an easy and effective way to train individuals to evaluate replacement gilts. Now we will look at how the front leg side view impacts locomotion. The gilts shown here have very good angles to their front pasterns and knees. They are flexible and athletic in their design. As you can see, these females have excellent locomotion. See how these gilts take long strides off their front ends. Long strides indicate these gilts are elastic in their design and structurally sound. Notice also how they can rapidly move across the pen. Gilts with poor locomotion will have difficulty running across slatted floors. Now let's revisit our buck kneed gilt with the straight pasterns. Again, note the amount of surface area the foot shares with the floor. Pigs with straight pasterns distribute their weight across a smaller area of the foot relative to those with normal or weak pasterns. Hence, they have a smaller surface area to support their body weight. Again, using our banana analogy, we see the curvature of this gilt's pastern and knee does not resemble the shape of a banana like we saw with our structurally sound gilts. But now let's examine the locomotion of this gilt. We can see she takes a shorter stride off her front end when compared to our gilts with a good front leg side view. This gilt also has less flexibility in her stride and her front knee appears to buckle when she stands on her front leg. Again, Gilts of this type should be cold. The gilt shown here is somewhat buck kneed, yet still has adequate slope to the pastern. Let's evaluate her locomotion. Similar to the last gilt we saw with buck knees, this gilt takes a shorter, choppier stride off her front end when compared to the structurally sound gilts. As you can see, it is difficult for her to move quickly across slatted floors. 
This guilt should only be kept if necessary to meet breeding targets. Earlier we established that the front legs carry 56% of a pig's body weight, meaning that the rear legs hold 44% of the pig's body weight. This diagram, also adapted from the National Swine Improvement Federation, shows how the angle of the rear pastern and hock change for weak pasterns, normal, and post-legged conditions. Females that have straight rear pasterns should be under consideration for culling. Shown here are gilts with different rear leg side views. The gilt shown on the left has very good cushion in the rear pasterns, but in contrast the gilt on the right has straight rear pasterns. Let's take a look at the locomotion of these two gilts. Both gilts shown here have good cushion in the rear pasterns. As you can see, they both move about free and easy off of their rear legs. But again, here is our gilt with straight rear pasterns. And note how she takes shorter, choppier steps off both her rear legs and front legs when compared to our structurally sound gilts. The diagram shown here, adapted from Zinpro, displays differences in foot and leg design when pigs are viewed from the front and from the rear. Front and rear toes should always face forward, as shown by the normal condition. Gilts that are splay-footed or cow-hocked should likely be cold. Shown here are gilts with different front views. The gilt on the left has a normal front view, as her front toes face forward. The gilt on the right, though, is splay-footed, as her toes point outward. Note she also has a small inside toe. Small inside toes are generally an indicator of poor structural design. The gilt shown here differ in body width. The gilt on the left is wide based, and she stands with width between her front and rear legs. Her wide base is related to the fact that she is wide throughout the center part of her rib cage. In contrast, the gilt on the right is narrow based. She stands with little space between her front legs and is very narrow through the center part of her body. Let's look at how base width can impact locomotion. We'll start with the wide based gilt. She moves free and easy off of her front and rear legs. Note also that her toes point forward. She has good cushion in her both her front and rear pasterns and good curvature in her front knee. Hence, you can see how good structural conformation traits have favorable associations with each other. And now here is our narrow-based gilt. See how she tracks narrow in both the front and the rear. Now let's revisit examples of good and poor structural conformation and put it all together to see how they each relate to locomotion. Shown here is our gilt with ideal structural conformation. She has excellent cushion in her front and rear pasterns, curvature to the knee, and base width. She has even toes that point forward and is level topped. These litter mate gilts are flexible and athletic in their design. They take long, easy strides off both their front and rear legs. These females have excellent locomotion. And again, here is our gilt with poor structural conformation. She is straight in her front pasterns and buck kneed, and she is splay-footed, meaning her front toes point outwards. She is narrow through the chest, indicating she is narrow-based. A gilt like this should never be bred, as she is more likely to become a downer sow, and is likely to produce offspring with structural problems. Let's revisit the locomotion of this gilt with poor structural conformation. See how the female takes shorter strides relative to our structurally sound gilts. She also has less flexibility in her stride, and her front knees appears to buckle when she stands on her front leg. Again, gilts of this type should always be culled and never allowed into the breeding herd. We have now looked at both superior and inferior structural conformation, but now let's briefly look at mediocre structural conformation, as the majority of the gilts on the farm are likely to fit into this category. The gilt shown here has good cushion in her front pasterns, yet her rear pasterns could use a little more cushion, and her front knee could use more curvature. Let's take a look at her locomotion. The base width of this gilt is average. She is not wide-based or extremely narrow. 
She strides out pretty well off of her front and rear legs, yet she is not quite as flexible in her design as the ideal gilts we saw earlier with ideal structural conformation. However, this gilt would generally be acceptable for entry into the breeding herd. In summary, good gilt structural conformation will increase farm profit by enhancing sow retention and through the production of more robust market hogs. We recommend to choose gilts primarily based on their front leg side view and selecting those that have cushion in their front pasterns and curvature in the front knees. Females with straight front pasterns and buck knees should always be culled. Additional resources on this topic, including replacement gilt selection posters and the replacement gilt evaluation pocket guide, are available through the Pork Checkoff website at www.pork.org. And finally, we would like to acknowledge the following individuals and organizations for their contributions to the video. Questions on the material may be sent to Mark Knauer at the email address provided on the screen.